It's a rare remnant of colonial Boston. The narrow alleys of the Blackstone Block date back to the 17th century, and the establishments that line these streets celebrate their history. On the northwest corner, you find Boston's oldest restaurant, its neighbor, America's oldest continuously running tavern. Jimmy Wilson was the last town crier for the city of Boston. He founded the Bell and Hand in 1795 after he put down his bell and went behind the bar and started to tell his tale back then. Back then, a wood carving like this was the only sign. It hung outside, there was no text. Debbie Kessler and her husband Adam are the current owners, the caretakers of the Bell and Hand's storied past. People from all over the world, all over the states, come to the Bell in Hand. It's a true meeting place. That was also true hundreds of years ago. It's been said Daniel Webster, Paul Revere, and Sam Adams were frequent customers. Full disclosure, they didn't stand in this exact spot. This bar has moved from location to location. The original Bell in Hand was just about where City Hall sits now. The tavern also famously flourished in Pie Alley off Washington Street. Pie Alley was kind of the newspaper row and it was called Pie Alley because people used to throw their linotype out the window. Pied type is jargon for loose type and the history of the bell in hand is a little loose too, but just for a few years. The only time in history we were closed was during Prohibition. Right. Yes, and who knows that. <laughs> Debbie's grandfather took ownership in the 1950s. Since then, her family has worked to preserve its rich history. A local artist is responsible for the portraits that line the walls. He did copies of the National Gallery paintings and basically added something new to each one. We didn't have a portrait of Jimmy Wilson, the founder of the Bell in Hand, so we dubbed in my father. I see the resemblance. Dead, yes. <laughs> The Kesslers credit the welcome feel of the tavern, their service for their incredible longevity. I think it's heart. The whole place has a heart. The fresh New England fare can't hurt either. The most popular menu item is the clam chowder. Piles of fish and chips and overflowing lobster rolls are favorites too. As for the drinks, the strongest Jimmy Wilson would serve was a cream ale when he opened Bell in Hand. He refused to sell spirits. Sam Adams now makes a special variety of ale just for the tavern. The the reason for the two mugs, if you were at Bell in Hand in 1795, you'd be served in two pewter mugs just like this, one for the froth and one for the ale. I'm not sure how you drink both, so we'll stick with one. But why stick to just one tavern when another only steps away also has some pretty great bragging rights. Welcome to the headquarters of the American Revolution, the Green Dragon. Founded in 1654, way before Bell in Hand. The catch is the original Green Dragon burned down several times. It was reborn 25 years ago thanks to John Summers. Noel and Sean Summers say their father loved the history of the tavern, named for the weathered bronze dragon out front. It's where the Sons of Liberty met to plot the American Revolution. Sam Adams, all the heavy hitters. Back then, times were so tense, the pewter mugs here had glass bottoms. You wanted to have eyes on people at all times. And ears on on them too, it said a 13-year-old bar boy overheard British soldiers talking about troop movements at the Green Dragon, and it was those loose lips that sent Paul Revere on his famous ride before the battles of Lexington and Concord. There wouldn't be an America if there wasn't a Green Dragon. Certain items on the menu pay tribute to the history here. There's a shepherd's pie and a bubble and squeak the early American answer for leftovers. They would fry it up and it was called bubble and squeak because of the noises it would make. And so we have our own take. It's a potato pancake with corned beef, cabbage, carrots, and cheese. No battles brewing anymore. Customers can just enjoy the fair and the revolutionary flavor of the space. The summers say their goal is to provide warmth and respite. My father's ambition always was to give hospitality to the weary travelers. And that's really what it comes down to. When you come to Boston, whether you're a tourist or whether you live here, that you know, you're welcomed and feel good when you're sitting in here and leave with a smile.